Mm-hmm. Hey folks, and welcome to Art Notes, the podcast where myself, Jonathan Liddell, has a chat and interviews fellow creatives and entrepreneurs. Today, I have got the privilege of being joined by Katie Templeton, who is a video game <laughs> art undergrad student. How are you doing, Katie? Nice to see I'm you. good, thank you. Lovely to be here too. Hi there. Hi there, everyone. <laughs> who are you? What do you do? Oh, I am a video game art undergraduate student um, who is an aspiring environment artist slash production artist in the game or films industry. Um, I'm in my final year, despite the fact it's my second year, um, Mm because I'm on a little bit of a fast track course. Mm -hmm. um, And I'm just trying to network with people and get out there in the industry and see what it it has to offer for me. So I'm just at the start of my journey, (laughs) but it's an exciting place to be. 100% 100% no that's that sounds that sounds amazing I mean I my um my understanding of the kind of the the 3D and and game industry world is is certainly very limited so I'm I'm really looking forward to just kind of hearing how you got into this where the kind of interest started um I said what you're kind of working on just now and um I'll um yeah t- talk us through that one actually let's let's just dive straight into into that so you okay. you right now you are so you're on a fast track course you mm-hmm. you're in the equivalent of what would be a normal fourth year of of uni yeah. um and you are breaking into the video game industry to do environmental art so when yes. characters are running around of uh, an environment in a video game uh-huh. you are the one designing those 3d assets and all the rest of it hopefully oh, <laughs> yeah, man. That's, that's, oh, that's that sounds road, so indeed. cool right bring me bring me back to the beginning okay how why did you apply for that course how, d- how did oh. that happen were you so talk me through um it. I'll talk you through it. Um, Originally, I was a very um, traditional artist. I did a lot of fine art illustration. Um, I I was kind of looking to do illustration at university. I thought that would be a really interesting path for me to take. And I did a few uni open days. And I was always that kid that was incredibly keen to go to like prospectus days for universities. Like I started at like 16, just going to these open days, being like, Mm. what can I do in my future? Um, Because I think I was always just eager to get going, you know, and I think that's why this course suited me in the end. Um, but I had a little look around and uh, I've always had an interest in games like mm-hmm. a massive interest in games ever mm-hmm. since I've been like five years old my dad stuck me on the original Guild Wars oh, on like amazing. a really bad computer and I yep. just loved it you know mm-hmm. um, I did all of the Diablos and I was proper mm-hmm. into it as, as a little one and uh, it was something that I did with my dad a lot and then uh, I was looking at different creative courses because that's always been what I've enjoyed the most in in life, I suppose, and my my skill set. So I had a little look around and I, for the longest time, didn't think that games was a thing or ever Mm -hmm. would be a thing um, until I went to a university open day and there was a video game art course in the next room. And I was like, what you know i was like this exists people people get paid to do this in in an educational setting you know it was um it blew my tiny mind so Mm -hmm. i kind of went away and i was just at the start of my as levels at the time and i I did some internet digging and i was like games careers and um i did stumble across some artists that I, i've held high in my you know art hero mm-hmm. hall of fame for quite yep. a, a while um, and then i kind of looked into their roles in companies and the fact that they can work in a studio or in freelance mm-hmm. and there's multi-millions of pounds in these things and i was like whoa this is blowing my mind so um i ended up on that course that i, that I originally went to see and um, I've loved it ever since and I wouldn't go back for the world because oh, it, it, it's honestly just a fusion of my two biggest interests yep. Um, yep. in a media that I think is incredibly powerful and relevant in, in the modern world and in the world to come really. So Unpack so- that for me. Do you know what? Like, let's, I really want to, um, I, I, I would love to hear you talk about that. Why, why do you think it's so impactful? We, we both have an interest in The Last of Us, for example. Yes. Um, Amazing game. <laughs> if, if, love that. If you could talk <laughs> about the main characters being Ellie and Dutch and what that actually truly means to you, what, why, no. why, why? why <laughs> We're, we're, it's it's no. fine. Dutch is in Red Dead Redemption, also a fabulous oh, game. Did I, did I say Dutch? Oh <laughs> yeah. man, my brain is just like that's horrendous. Yeah, did it's I a great game. It's also that, a that's great hilarious. Game, yeah, there honestly. you go. 
Joel, Honestly, Joel and Ellie it. flipping out and mixing that up with something else of mine. Um, that's terrible. I've uh, got a yeah, plan. So, exactly. <laughs> got a plan. So unpack that for me. Why? Why is? Um, why was that such an impactful game? Game for you personally? So it was one of the first um, hyper realistic games that I had the experience playing, um, and they'd really pushed the boundaries of just visual art to a whole nother level with The Last of Us 1. And it was a game that I played with my dad. And if you're familiar with the game, I don't know if everybody listening is, but um, it's the kind of narrative between a father figure and a young girl. And to play that with my dad side by side throughout the whole game was a really beautiful um, moment in our relationship, really, as, as you know, a daughter and a father. Um, but it was also a very impactful moment for my career path, I suppose, because mm. it kind of taught me the value in digital media in this way. Um, it, it, it operates like a film. Games operate like films, but they're immersive films where you choose... In some games, you do directly choose the actions of the character, but you follow a character through their life or any hard situations they're dealing with or... Um, the narrative of the game and you kind of be, part of yourself is in that character I know it sounds incredibly cheesy but no, no, you get ahead. so attached to these mm -hmm. these pla these characters you play because you are the player you're in control mm -hmm. you're holding the controller so to speak um, and it's it's so impactful because it's like watching a box set um, and I all look, everybody loves a bit of Game of Thrones you know it's like it's like appreciating a box set but you're actually in the action and you kind of interact with that world and there's something so mm. powerful about that and and that's kind of where the an initial love for kind of narrative storytelling in a 3D uh, form really came from yeah. um, and also there was some incredible environment artists on that project that just 100% I idolise yeah. <laughs> yeah. they are just Fantastic. next level pushing mm. the boundaries like forever coming up with new ideas coming up with ways mm. of capturing something that's natural in an unnatural setting and I think that's so mm. powerful that people can do that and people have the skill set to do that that's kind of really what inspired me to mm. get going on my own um creative oh, journey love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's so it's such a different type of media to absorb and i think that's mm -hmm. why it's taken off in the past couple of years especially more narrative things like cyberpunk mm -hmm. came out recently yep. and the witcher was an absolute hit and yep. um, you get all of those narrative choice games now when there's really not a fat lot of gameplay but it's just all about mm -hmm. whether you interact with that character or not you know and i think that's it's reflective of you know the society we live in we want a digital media but we also want to have the, the emotion you'd feel as if you were reading a book you know or if you were watching a box set and I think that's why um it, it holds its place and I think that's why I was so attracted to it to begin with so yeah that's so <laughs> cool honestly I love it I I a I can I can certainly appreciate that with um with, with my own love for for powerful storytelling mm -hmm. and I, I really yeah. think that that is it is that we we as as people like you know we all um uh, we're all absorbing and and consuming entertainment in various ways mm -hmm. because we want to be hooked on a story or we want yep. to feel an experience mm -hmm. and i think that's so it's, it's really important to yep. um to highlight the not only the validity and power that um the video game industry offers to that but also just how like valuable that is we mm -hmm. talked earlier about the relationship between joel and and Ellie in The Last of Us, yeah. and th you have a character who has, well, from, from Ellie's perspective, there is no mm -hmm. father figure until there's suddenly Joel. And with yeah. Joel, you, he is already a father figure, but with no one to father. And it's almost yeah. his, a story of his reluctance to then relearn how to be a dad, yeah. which is incredible and so yeah. valuable and actually... Mm -hmm so many people can relate to yeah. oh i don't really know how i feel about a father figure thanks and so many blokes can be like <laughs> yes. how the hell do i be a dad uh -huh. like you know that uh -huh. i think actually and it, it's and dressed in this apocalypse and with this visual mm -hmm. effects and shooting and gameplay mm -hmm. but at its core that's that's what it is it's just that relationship the same way that you know um other games like the witcher is just about the choices of a, ma a man and how he interacts with the world you know and mm -hmm. i think it, it when you break games down in that way it's it's so fascinating to see what you can learn from it as a player mm -hmm. and as a, a and a kind mm -hmm. of absorber of the media it's amazing certainly so. i always come back to a quote um or well, if i can actually remember who said it i'll type it up but lions lion cubs they learn how to be lions through play 
play yeah. is such an important mm -hmm. element of our social development and i think yeah. that if we can harness that to um to be relevant in the modern world to actually teach us how to live better you know i, yeah, I think that's exactly that's, that's such a such a clever clever media anyway i would love to see some of your work um Ooh. do you have anything that you could talk us through just so that people I, people I are do. like what's an environment what um, is this um hold on hold on i will i will hold go, on. go 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 i'm new to zoom everybody that is all right me. right okay um i think that's what i want okay mm -hmm. am i am i up am i up am i up? Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Look at that. Okay, so here's an example of um, some work I, I do at uni. This is one of our modules, and um, we were tasked with creating an ancient temple um, environment kit. And it was a module that I just adored because I could go into all the nitty gritty detail of, you know, looking into how stone would wear and how you know vines sway in the breeze. And it's I love that kind of thing. That's the kind of thing I really nerd out over, you know. Um, so here's love the it. kind of finished environment in all of its glory. Um, I added some little paint splooshes in Sketchbook Pro, which is a brilliant free software, by the way, if anybody's mm -hmm. listening and wants to get into art, just 10 out of 10. Um, but it's made up of these like kit and modular assets, which uh, help build this environment. And this is what, um, it's kind of heart destroying really, but this is what these games and these environments really break down to, all these kind of little Lego blocks. Mm. Um, and it was a process of me learning how to, and, and finalizing these Lego blocks to make my own kind of environment. Um, and that went into the final image that we see here. So this is an example of my environment work. Um, this is the kind of work I do that gets me excited. You know, this is the kind of mm. stuff I love. Um, so yeah. <laughs> oh, it's class. I love it. Thank you. So it's, it's all in the digital form. Um, I can show you a little bit of my pro process if you'd be Please interested. Please do it. Yeah, show us how you get to the Lego blocks. Like how, do how, does, how does this happen? So ah, smart. The Lego blocks are made of even smaller Lego blocks, if we're using this analogy, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, where you break it down into a mesh and a texture, and then you combine the two in a game engine, and that's the final visual product that you see. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I use various... Uh, softwares to create a lot of this stuff i use like autodesk maya and zbrush and photoshop and substance painter and all of these um, industry standard softwares which i've had a fabulous experience with through uni because otherwise i would have never had an opportunity oh, um, amazing yep. Yep, yep. um to put these uh assets into an engine and then arrange them and and light them how i want to and it's a it's a lovely experience uh, so even something as simple as a set of walls, you know, a lot of thought has to go into it. And that's why um, the more you look into games, the more you realize and understand why there are like thousands of people in companies to churn out games the way they do. Because um, mm -hmm. there's such a consumer demand, um, but it yep. will take like four production years just, just to get the game pretty much ready. Um, but it's a lot of... Uh, I'd call it analytical thinking or problem mm -hmm. solving. It's almost like yep. doing a, a puzzle. Certainly. Um, yeah. And then you add the kind of visual flavor on top. And, and that's the bit I love the most. You, know, you can make mm. something feel a bit more alive, you know, and uh, sell the realism in a digital form, which I think sell is really Sell the realism. Exciting. Yeah, certainly. Oh, what? So, so even I'm just seeing your, um, the vegetation down there, the leaves. You've not yes. just got a stamp of a leaf. You've got the wire mesh, which then dictates how that leaf yes. then f it, it mm -hmm. forms or do, do they have um so I, I presume you can then put in some code to then make them like sway in the breeze can you yeah yeah kind of so like? um, oh, yeah. Man, it's just, i love so, all this stuff it's like it's, so a, process, it's a totally new I'll, world i'll to give me. you like a, a mm. tidbit of the process um, for, for this leaf pack that i made um mm -hmm. they, they like things in packs the games industry because mm -hmm. you're trying mm -hmm. to use a everything as efficiently as possible yep. so if you can use one asset and stamp it around a level 20 mm -hmm. times that's so mm -hmm. much better than making individual wonderful things mm -hmm. um so i made uh three meshes for my leaves and i made them curve the geometry curve the way i'd want the leaf to fan out mm -hmm. of this fern plant um, i then went away and took a top-down photo of um a 
a fern leaf that I just had in the garden. Mm. Um, I do a lot of this self-reference stuff because I think it's so important as it just in general as an artist to look at real life oh, if you're so trying lovely. to imitate it because the amount yep. of times that you can just guess what something looks mm-hmm. like and it's just mm-hmm. so painfully wrong, you know. Yep. Um, yep. Because there's, there's all these like little intricacies. Mm-hmm. So I made my own um, texture set in a Substance Designer. Mm-hmm. for this leaf and I was kind of using the image that I took as a reference so all of the the cross criss crossy little leaf patterns and the, mm-hmm. the kind of colors and stuff and then I uh, kind of churned that texture out and applied it to um, a mesh and then I popped that into a game engine and from there I was able to take the geometry I'd made and add like nodes in the Unreal Engine which is a very f- it's a free tool amazingly I still can't um, believe Unreal. such a powerful <laughs> tool that they <laughs> give away for free it's like That's whoa yep. um, so if you're interested in any of this stuff just please just download it and have a play because mm. it's great what you can do um, but anyway I popped these in Unreal and uh, you could there's some little node editing uh side of things where Mm -hmm. you can drop on a wind speed parameter and it just makes everything jiggle a little bit and it just brings it to life it's that final touch that just makes it feel real you know you've got um so it's a lot of it's a lot of uh it's a mixture of traditional painting skills observational work and then just um computer literacy really and, and mm-hmm. that technical side of things so that observational work i was just going to highlight that just very quickly mm-hmm. i i completely agree with you if you go out into the world and actually see how gold a gold object would reflect the world yep. around it or how a, a breeze uh, how a, um, a leaf would sway in the breeze or and what type of happens is it yeah. really does sell the believability and i think that, yeah, that is it 100%. it's like you almost don't notice it and because you don't notice it it's done its job until you focus on it because if you did notice it you might be noticing it for the wrong reasons so it's like yep. that's so important to i mean so I, I do this in for my illustration mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. totally agree yeah. totally agree sorry carry on that's um oh carry on, oh, carry on. Look, Ooh, what right. I do? sorry i'm seeing it now yeah just how you're building these like monolith um structures that's look at that Yes, it's all uh, it's all modular. I'll I'll go to another one. I'll I'll have mm-hmm. a little. Oh, hello. This is Katie. Doesn't know how to use the internet. I'll, You're fine. Uh, I'll move, you just take I'll your move time. To another one. Um, yep. So this was a collaborative project, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, let me go to an image that that I think is quite sexy. That <laughs> would be a good thing to highlight. Yeah. This is Collab- a, a collaborative. How was that experience? Yeah. Tell oh. us about that. Um. Very fortunately. Um. Mm. So. Let's go right back from the start. Time mm-hmm. travel. Mm-hmm. Um, I my university course is very uh, collaborative led, which was something that drew me to it because I initially wanted that industry experience as soon as I could get it, because uh, <laughs> patience isn't one of my biggest virtues. <laughs> um, so the fact that most of my projects at uni have been either collaborative or semi collaborative or collaborative on some level um, has really taught me a lot of valuable skill sets and especially with the pandemic you know mm-hmm. working remotely and doing all that has really kind of prepped me for the industry in a really great way um because lots of jobs now can just be remote you know um but the collaborative project uh, process as artists is um it's a mixture of trying to unify a vision and creating something to a consistent quality overall and they're they're two really important things to consider when you're doing something collaborative as as a collective of artists and I was so incredibly fortunate for this project to be working with some of my now best friends honestly Um, I met them on this course I met them doing this project and Mm. um, I'll probably share their socials because they're fabulous yeah Um, by all means we we can have as much as many resources and talk in 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 the Um, in the in the the, uh, show notes as you like yeah 100 percent um but they they are they were so supportive and they created such a community where you could ask questions and push yourself further and that's such a valuable thing especially for any creative discipline Mm. um and they were really there every moment you had like I don't know, a piece of computer software just blow up because you get that happening all the time or you mm-hmm. just lost a file or you don't know how to approach something. They were just such a supportive, wonderful collective of people. And I, I hope they feel the same way about me. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's such a valuable experience and it, and it taught me a lot about myself. It pushed my own um, 
capabilities further than I ever thought I could because we created an end product which is uh, the passengers bar scene by the way from the, the movie um which was I was, to... I was looking at it and I was like do I recognize <laughs> this I was like that yeah, is yeah, so yeah, we had clever. to recreate it um from, so the brief was go film. recreate the, the yeah passengers the brief bar was recreate scene. a scene from a movie and we picked passengers oh, class it was such wow. a wonderful brief. Yeah, it had to be a room. Uh, mm-hmm. It had to be reasonable, so you couldn't like have made the whole of Hogwarts. Although I did pitch sure. it initially, so mm-hmm. don't put it past me. Um, and it was it was fabulous because it was a lot of uh, researching into how films were made mm-hmm. and how props were sourced. And I think I spent nearly three days just looking at how the designer of the wallpaper physically printed the wallpaper. Wow! And like yep. how how the yep. you know the Fabriano glass was made, the fact that mm-hmm. every chair in this real life scene in the film mm-hmm. is like seven grand. It's like, <laughs> what? You know, Shit. it's just, it's brilliant. I, I found the research that a, goes into this. Exactly. Yeah. It's brilliant. Mm. But it's that kind of stuff that makes it every project, even if you're not necessarily interested in the topic, um, absolutely fabulous because you just learn such random things. Like I found the exact rug that's this print of carpet and I was so tempted just to post it to one of my friends just for a laugh because it's just <laughs> just because it's honestly it's, it's brilliant doing this kind of research though because it kind of teaches you lots of other um well you highlighted something things, really yeah. really important there which i think um is is just so valuable in terms of a you're working with other people we could talk about that at length b you are engaging all the skills and um, assets that you bring to the table to do a job that you might not particularly be interested in. I was just thinking it was really, it was excellent that you've got an example of a kind of Mayan tomb experience in the last image that you showed. And then here we are with a very modern sci-fi bar scene, very, very different aesthetic, but the yeah. tools and the skills that are being applied are the same and to your credit. Um, oh man, I love it. So yeah, sorry, keep going, keep going. <laughs> it's, um, oh, it's, keep going, it's keep going. Um, yeah, so hilariously enough, I just hadn't watched this film before doing this project. <laughs> um, I'm, I live under a rock, to be honest, where I just rewatch the same box set over and over and over, <laughs> um, like a crazy person. Um, so part of the research was just sitting and watching Chris Pratt for two hours. It's great. <laughs> Such a hard life. <laughs> Re- recommend the film. It's a great film. But yeah, so that was one of our collaborative projects. That was really lovely, really mm. lovely. To so that. working with, with the team, um, that again, will will bring up its own kind of challenges and experiences, but you've, you've come out of that with some very dear, close and, respected and trustworthy friends i imagine yes. if, if that's They're the case amazing. i mean yep. and what an intense um what an intense experience to all be given a brief and then be like right go don't fall out go create a product here's your deadline <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> like, it's, like it's being great. able to it's, work um, with other people is yeah. is a skill in itself it's it's kind of wonderful in its, its own sense because um because of the nature of the course i was on or mm-hmm. he's on um you get people that have had careers before choosing this degree because it's it gets them qualified faster or you get people Mm. that are parents to kids and that they're coming on this course because it suits their lifestyle a little bit better or you get people that are a little bit more um set on where they want to go because it's quite Mm -hmm. niche Mm -hmm. um that you just meet so many different people from different walks of life that you just never meet in a in a normal setting you know and it's it's so lovely to collaborate together and um Mm -hmm. produce something that we we were really Mm -hmm. proud of in the end like we ended up making a a, i can't show it because the music is copywritten but we ended (laughs) up uh, making a like a cinematic uh video of the passengers bar scene and and each of these modules oh, cool. that I do are five yeah. weeks long. So right, five weeks right. you know, from nothing to the final mm-hmm. product is um, a very tight deadline, especially at sure. that stage. I was just still learning how to make a cube. I was know? just going to say, so your timeline um, is five, five weeks five with a weeks bunch of people that you've just started everything. to... Yeah. Wow, <laughs> yeah. wow yeah. that's amazing. Uh, it's intense. Look at that. You're, you're selling this course, that's for sure. Where <laughs> this are you course again? Is designed for the hunt. 
Where am I? Oh, uh, yeah. Birmingham City University, and it's a video game digital art course. It's fabulous. Cool. I'll um, pop a link for that. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's ace. It's ace if you you want to just get straight into it and you don't mind throwing yourself in the deep end. And I Amazing. quite like throwing myself in the deep end, so it worked out wonderful for me. Fantastic. <laughs> um, cool. But yeah, so having such short deadlines and having to gel with people and work with people and find out things about other people especially in a climate where you actually can't meet people in person like that good point i'm friends with these people and i have been for a year now pretty much and i've seen them like once in person Mm. and it's it's such a strange feeling especially for me who's quite you know huggy touchy feely you know sure yeah 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 Mm -hmm. um it was it was strange adapting to that but it was so lovely to have that experience of trying to bond with people that you've never been in the same room as you know and yep. create something and create something yep. you're proud of but when we released this cinematic video we we're all just crying like babies because we were so <laughs> proud of ourselves because we've gone from literally nothing to something that we were really pleased with and looking back at it now with a couple more modules under my belt mm. I'm just thinking oh there's certain things on tweak or that's annoying me or whatever uh, but, but as a final image yep. you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. happy so. that's 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 part of it isn't it is you yeah. you and again like five weeks intensive i'm not surprised that you're all like oh my goodness let's sit down and actually have a little <laughs> have a little breather because yeah it, that's a that's a there's a lot to yeah that is that is a lot to learn how to do on the fly collaborate yeah. get on show up yeah. to work do it remotely bond yeah. with people trust yeah. them and then come out the end with a with a product that you're pleased with. Matt and yeah. I were talking about this last time where it was like, if you're 90% happy with the product, ship it. You know, <laughs> you can ship that product, finish not perfect. And if 90% is pretty damn high anyway, like you can make it 100% on the next one. You learn yeah. from what you're doing on this one to 100%. then apply to the next one. 100%. Love that. Yeah. But Great. I think what I love is because the time frames are so short, you do just yes. have to ship it. You know what I mean? Whether, yeah, whether it's sure. done or not. Mm-hmm, you you mm-hmm. hand that in and that's kind of nice for myself especially because I used to do a lot of fine art and I used to do portraiture and mm-hmm. I'd be in there making somebody's nose look right and I'd do it like seven times and it it takes that kind of self-criticism away from it mm-hmm. because you've just got to produce something and I think that's also what's drawing me to the industry a lot as well because you have to work to deadlines it's a very deadline yep. intensive job you know because yep. you've, you've yep. at the end of the day you've got shareholders and you've got a game that yep. needs to be made and you've got somebody else relying on you in the pipeline and that kind of environment is is what kind of makes me produce something that I'm actually happy with because I know that I wouldn't have been able to have t- taken it any further, even if I wanted to. You know, it forces the brakes on me. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That's and, and that's really valuable. Oh, yeah. That's that's really that's so valuable to highlight. Um, that's uh, yeah. No, I I can only agree with that. I think we can get far too caught up on. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Did you did you still have stuff you wanted to share, or do you want to pop out of that? I can keep going if you want, but I don't know if, if I'm taking yeah, I'll tell you what, time. If, no, 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 you're grand. It was, um, no, I was just, uh, no, no, yeah, yeah, tell you what, Pop, we'll jump onto one um, one other piece that you might want to want to talk about. Now, all I was going to say really was, um, um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Uh, <laughs> there you go, this will happen. I do it all the time, don't Real worry. Time. You'll, you'll no, get you're there fine. eventually, I'll be fine. There we go. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that was it. Sorry. Yeah. You're, you're used, you've come from a fine art background where you're yeah. used to spending hours and hours and hours on one piece and, yeah. and be like, oh, well, is it finished? Is it not? And then you're thrust into an industry and working towards an industry where it's like, no, this needs to be finished, not perfect. Mm-hmm. Get the thing done. There are other people yeah. relying on you, which I think really does hammer home the, you're not just accountable to yourself. You're yeah. accountable to other people. Mm-hmm. And my goodness, like, I mean, personally speaking, I, I think there's a lot to be learned from really taking responsibility for yourself yeah. and as a result, how that then benefits and affects other people. Um, so, oh man, you're really, uh, oh, I'm kind of looking at this like, can I go back to uni again? <laughs> right, carry on, tell me, tell me about this um, very dark and ominous looking character. Oh, this fella. Um, this is another five week module. Um, mm-hmm. And in this module, we had to learn three new pieces of software create our first ever character 
I was just going to say, that's not an environment. Yeah. Uh, it's not an environment. This is a character piece. You know, oh, show she does it all. Oh, she does it all. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Carry on. Yeah, I'll be quiet. Um, you, um... Learning three pieces of software, um, creating a character from the ground up, making sure mm-hmm. he was technically ready to be rigged and moved around with and passed on in a pipeline. Yep. Uh, get a design you were happy with and kind mm-hmm. of manipulate a concept or something that you were really pleased with. And mm-hmm. it was intense. It was over Christmas. So as you can imagine. Oh, my goodness <laughs> it was it was like I, I took like three days off to have christmas dinner mm-hmm. and then relax for two days yep. Yep. To which i played the sims 3 because <laughs> and then I, and I got jumped back straight on it and it was incredibly intensive and we were handed over to a guest lecturer who was fabulous mm. um and it was it was rough, but it, it was one of those instances where you kind of thrust under pressure to the point where you kind of end up with something you're really happy with again like that's a I pressure cooker right there work. look at that result it looks class <laughs> thank Scroll you down. Let's, yeah no seriously have, like, how, have, how, have, a little, have a little look yeah do it do it do it do it so um my concept for this was by andrew martin who's a lecturer at the university and also worked on some fabulous titles himself um he created this wonderful vampire concept and i wanted to create a kind of normal looking vampire gentleman and then the proper vampire concept on the other side to get that kind of contrast oh, um, and it was learning things from the ground up it was you know making a skeleton and putting skin on top of it and then making mm-hmm. sure that it was technically read apologize correctly and it was mm-hmm. putting details in and making clothes in a cloth simulator and um putting textures on and enhancing all of the features and lighting a scene it was it was it was rough but it was again it was a wonderful opportunity to see how far i could push myself um in a short span of time and mm-hmm. constantly trying to make sure that i was achieving something i was happy with and at the end of the day i was proud of this you know there's things again i'd change but it was 90 percent and it got shipped <laughs> yeah yeah 100 percent. because if you you i mean you put the just stop on this one here I, I I remember seeing the wire mesh of that kind of waistcoat vest and you putting on those yes. um uh that that kind of material texture and and the yes. the seam the the it's not the stitching the seaming, the stitching thank you yeah, yeah the embroidery thank you <laughs> Educate me. I'm, Sorry, don't worry. I have to I'm learn failing on words. I, yeah, I had to exactly. learn how, what patterns of clothes were. I was By like, way, I'm never going to need to make a shirt. Now I yeah. know. You know. There it's you crazy. go. You've you've made one in 3D. I mean, it's crazy. And actually, yeah, if you go down to the boots, I remember seeing this in particular in in the mm-hmm. wire mesh phase, and yeah. you putting on the buttons and putting in the um, stitching, and I was just like what <laughs> how how is this it's like this is not a painting you built you essentially built clothing yeah i mean that's that's oh cool so this one on. gives me a giggle i'll, I'll quickly mm-hmm. go through this one so go uh, this it. is going back to using real life reference right mm-hmm. so the concept originally had face paint on this vampire's face which was a really mm-hmm. interesting thing that i haven't really seen in any kind of modern day vampire or anything that i've seen in media you know mm-hmm. so i definitely wanted to hammer home this face painted look and i went on google images and i was like oh yeah face paint reference photo and i got some interesting things let me tell you mm-hmm. and then i thought okay i need reference i need very specific reference mm-hmm. so i ended up cracking out my own blue face paint i've got it here actually fantastic and, and painting my own face and uh, screenshotting that and and using that as reference to then texture and to get the the, the kind of drips and the texturing i was just white. about to highlight that yeah. i was and just about so- to highlight the fact that if you just pulled up a photo reference, yep. you wouldn't get that dripping. I mean, I'm now pointing at the screen. Like, you wouldn't get like that top. <laughs> Shall I go for oh, it? I'll go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be quiet and I love it. Yeah, it's, um, just yeah, like it, was, that. Yeah. it was intense again, but it was, it's that it's coming back to them traditional practices, core mm-hmm. art values, even in something that's very technology based and all mm-hmm. just on the net, you know. Uh, core art values learning all your theory learning your color theory learning how to apply texture learning how to render properly or shade mm-hmm. or whatever, whatever term yep. you're using your yeah sure yeah, yeah, um, yeah getting your reference and getting clear reference and understanding how it kind of feels in a way yep. you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, what how would a cloth feel different to a leather how would a paint yep. feel different yep. it, it's those values like i'm you don't mind me if i, I reference them please no go ahead honestly go um, for it 
if you do anything creative this is fabulous. This is the Atlas of Human Anatomy for the artist. Don't know if you own this oh, as well. Yeah. This is a fantastic reference point. I've, I've got mm. like post-it notes and everything in it because I, I, I treat yeah, this yeah. like my Bible. Tell you what, Katie, could fantastic you, for drawing could you and just sketching. stop sharing the... Um, yeah. yeah, stop sharing this a minute and then we'll make that full screen and then you can... There you go. Yeah, pop, pop that okay. cover up to the camera again. My Atlas of Human Anatomy <laughs> for the artist magic yeah cool yep right go back it to your um go back to your vampire you got, I get, okay. yeah 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 go, um, go back to your vampire and, and finish up there but that's that's really important to to highlight like what resources I've got you're using one, and... I've oh go cool, shoot one. yeah 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 can please please do can i go for mm-hmm. two can you i go, go for two because yeah. they're so good so um this absolute gem this is this is my holy bible and it was referenced to me by my lecturer and i have used it every day since i bought it worth it and in a physical copy because then you can scribble all over it and mm-hmm. then secondly for environment people perspective made easy it's fabulous absolute uh, holy grail um again i just i use it all the time and i, I never yep. put it down and i sit with these two next to me like all of the time if i yep. need anything um but again it's coming back to those prints the core principles you know we did we started off my university course with um traditional art skills mm-hmm. um which is not what anybody expected because lots of people signed up for this digital course you know and we ended up spending eight hour lectures just drawing fruit you know and mm. my lecturer bless him is is a bit of a he's fabulously crazy that's the way i'd describe him you know Excellent. he'd go around and if if he thought that maybe you were getting somewhere near the end of your work he'd just come up and rip your book in half or he'd throw your pencil across the room or he'd tell you not to get precious about your work or Good. he'd tell you are you looking with your eyes or are you just imagining what it looks like you know yep. and we did that yep. for them months at the start of the course sure. yeah. um to get those foundational practices in place and that was just i've never been taught in that way before i, I did um gcse and a level and asr mm-hmm. um, and that was very uh self-directed study type mm-hmm. of deal where you just get like a, a point a topic and you'd go away and create a project on it which yeah. i loved i loved those days they were some of my favorite elements of school you know um but being having that very regimented style of teaching at the start for traditional art was just so valuable and it, it i'd recommend going to life drawing classes or doing something like that oh, if you're into that kind of stuff because it's just oh it's just so next level valuable. It's fabulous strong foundations actually exactly. getting strong foundational teaching and tutoring i've i completely agree completely agree <laughs> really yeah. really oh, wow man that's, yeah 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 <laughs> definitely yeah and again, being able to draw that back and say, this is why it's important. It's because I wanted to have drips coming off the face paint. Yep. I wanted to look at a wall and know what texture should be applied if it was had just been washed down by whoever or had actually got ivy growing over it. And, and how lighting affects a mood, all this stuff, and you know, yep. how, how models are, are built, how the anatomy actually functions. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah oh you're speaking my language i it's love fun. that it's honestly and i'm, I'm I've got so this... pleased to hear that <laughs> <laughs> i've got one lecturer his name's wayne mm. and he's fabulous mm-hmm. and anytime you make anything he'll sit yep. you down and he'll go right but why and i'll go okay so i've made a cup he's like cool but why i was like because this character wants a drink okay and mm-hmm. then i thought like, and i've put a bit of dirt on the side but why oh because they were holding it and and what was in it what's what stain is in it but why and it's like it's Excellent. that constantly building things and building ideas based off yep. the re- real world is what really sells things. And it's just so fascinating to sit and go into all of that. And that's oh, yep. just all of it. <laughs> just definitely. Yeah. So, so true. <laughs> Get your references. World, world building. Your world building is, <laughs> exactly. is, is so key. That's, um, Peaky Blinders is an amazing uh, example of that. And, uh, <laughs> hold up your cup for us. Me. There it is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> they they really did they they made they made that you know the, the guys behind the design of of those environments they knew what they were doing that's for sure exactly yeah. <laughs> they really did uh, but yeah um, I'm Birmingham so Pride. pleased <laughs> <laughs> I am so pleased to hear that your course started off with like traditional strong foundations and it not just be a here's a yeah and it not just be physical and and you were just kind of left at it in yeah. terms of like here's some fruit here's some pen and paper off you go come back yeah. in five weeks and tell us that you did something it was yeah. actually but why that's yeah. so good story Amazing. is king 
story it's just is amazing. Uh, it's and a, it made for some great. hilarious stories because the amount of books oh, that got thrown around is brilliant. Yep. Like that was yep. an icebreaker and a half. <laughs> you know Fantastic. I mean? Fabulous. No, oh, I love that. Cool. So um pushing on, I guess I guess we've kind of covered the the kind of art and education. Um what's the what has your experience been with your your well you you mentioned you had a couple of kind of idols that you look up to and yes. and we talked before about women specifically in specifically yes. in, in industry what's yes. the kind of um or what would you kind of guesstimate is like the kind of split just in your course like do, is it quite diverse do you oh, run it quite mixed do you think it's so, is it still male top male kind of heavy is it you know what's, so um, for the first year it's been quite a lovely split um mm-hmm. which is really progressive to see you know, um, I've, the, unfortunately, I've spoken to, you know, programmers and designers and there's mm. like one girl in programming and there's like two girls in design. And it, that's mm. a shame. That's a real shame to see, you know. But mm. I think because um, of the art media becoming a little bit more publicized and concept art being a big buzzword now at mm. the moment mm-hmm. in the illustration, it's drawn mm-hmm. a lot more females into the industry, which is fabulous to see. Right. Um, but unfortunately, I think we're only at the start of that process, you know. Um, I have art heroes and I very shamefully say that not one of them is a female because mm. I don't know any, you know, I don't, sure. they're yeah. not publicized enough, you know, mm-hmm. I, yep. I, as, this is incredibly embarrassing, but I did sit and Google at 17, can girls make games, you know, because I don't think that's embarrassing at all. Not, no, I, I think that's, out there, you know, there you go. And, uh, yep. I think that's something that I'd love to see more and more in the future is people hearing about this fantastic industry that I'd love to get involved with, um, Mm -hmm. having something more equal, you know, having, having Mm -hmm. the big guys at like Naughty Dog, for example, we've talked about a lot today, having a couple of big guys actually being ladies, you know, (laughs) it would be great. Yeah. Yeah. And it would, it would break down a lot of those initial barriers that, um, 17 year old Katie had when she didn't quite know if Mm -hmm. my gender was going to define whether I could do a university course for some dumb ass reason. Uh, I mean, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. If, if, if something isn't, if the information isn't re- either readily available or publicized, then it's kind of like, oh, can I do that? Like, is that, yeah. do I have permission? And especially like if you're, you know, like 17, who knows, who knows anything at 17? Like, who knows <laughs> what they're allowed or not allowed to do? Like, you know, yeah. no one knows how to make flipping beans on toast at that age. It's exactly. Still, yeah. Everybody's still trying to figure it out. So, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of funny because, um, like, the only, um, folk who are working directly in video games that I'm kind of connected with uh, are women exactly which is amazing it's like um, <laughs> Rowena of, um, uh, bah, 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 Rowena two minutes two minutes uh, friend, uh, friend so. Um, so she works on um, ARC that um, Ooh, yeah I'm I know right with that game. how cool is that <laughs> she she's something else like i'll i'll very quickly i'll just very very quickly um, oh so sure, sure, sure. yeah the, her, her embarrassing work story. is just... um, me and my friends mm. set up a server and we disappeared onto that game for a solid three and a half months and they've got kids <laughs> and i'm pretty sure they were just throwing meals at them and being like That's look hilarious. after yourself yeah, just look after yourself on you go oh fantastic um, yeah. is that coming up yes it is she's you know, she's such a oh. She's such a cool individual yeah. as well because she just really does promote so much kind of positive outlook on life uh-huh. as well, like really combating struggles uh-huh. with my whole thing, which is like, what's your ethos? It's actionable, positive advice. I mean, yeah. look at this girl. Like, she oh, just, it's just her amazing. work is amazing. Um, oh I like this. I, I remember watching oh, the progress yes. of, is that coming up? Um, okay, okay. Is that coming up? It's taking a moment. It's just chilling. It's fine. There we it's go. So she created the environment. She created the the raptor. I think yes. it is. Um, yes. I really hope there's some development work in here. Um, I don't know if that'll play, but we'll see. My internet might struggle with it. Um, yeah, I mean, just, oh, it's just amazing. Like you know, yeah. this was before the color. This was just a gray mesh of blobs. Yep. And I remember watching some. Oh, here we go. Like so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like look at this. She did that. Like she That's built this incredible. from nothing. Yeah. It was. I watched this turn from a ball of digital clay. Here we go. Like look at this. Yep. 
This is nuts. <laughs> here it yeah. is. So here's here's the ball of clay that she's bucking about with, and then you know before oh, you know it's it, it's just amazing. Mm-hmm. I uh, yeah, I have a lot of respect for folk who are in this industry because it's just yeah. so much time and effort goes into this. Yeah, so, it's so anyway, much time and I'll, effort, um, but there's such a high demand for new things all of the time, and mm-hmm. that's a, a brilliant thing, you know, because that yeah. keeps it going. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just it's. You kind of wish you could split yourself into like seven different people and sure. just keep churning yeah, out yeah. work, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Janine, who I know as well, Janine is is lovely. She is blatantly working her socks off. She's Aww. a she's a re- she's really really cool, um, and um, uh, she's based in Edinburgh. Um, but again, like her work is Aww. you know so so different yeah, yeah. and yet gorgeous. You know, like these yeah. like from a two D image into a 3d asset i just uh-huh. think like my hat goes off, to you, off mm-hmm. to you folks absolutely um, beautiful so clever so there you go but yeah it's um, just Jean it's Duke. seeing these people and, uh, you know it's, it's advertising going back to the women in games thing you know it's, yeah, it's, please. Adver- yeah. it's advertising these people as you know talented creative individuals because 17 mm-hmm. year old katie didn't know they existed and and it's mm-hmm it's getting there obviously it's, it's mm. any diversity in any workplace of any kind is obviously a fabulous mm. thing you know 100%. and so yep. we're moving towards um but yeah i think in the future it'd be excellent to see people like these advertised more on more platforms pushed further mm. um there is a actually i don't mind i don't know if you mind me dropping it but there's a charity called Please, women in sure. games Excellent. And they are a community. I think they're on Discord and they're also on LinkedIn, which I'm part mm-hmm. of myself. Excellent. And they they help women network with women, um, which is Excellent. fantastic because you get to know the positions that other people are in and you can get mm-hmm. support on the work you're doing and how to market yourself. And mm-hmm. um, it's a great resource if you're a, a young female wanting to enter the games industry or a, an older female wanting to enter the games mm-hmm. industry. I'm not discriminatively, you know, mm-hmm. do your thing. Um, yeah, no, it's absolutely fabulous at, you know, helping people awesome. have this exposure and pushing mm. each other to be better, you know, to achieve better things and to create want, better art because that's all it's about, you know. Get good at your that's skill, build community. We exactly. have, I've, I know fine well, you know, there, there's still so many, so many folk who are, who are living their lives so with things so close to the chest or can yeah. just be incredibly difficult to work to, bec- uh, yeah. work with because of either whatever they're going through or just their yeah. outlook on life which is yeah. this is mine this is how i got here yeah i'm not sharing this with anybody good luck <laughs> i'd like, love to be one of them people my it, would, goodness. it would make life like, easy <laughs> <laughs> it, well this is it it would make life easy until you actually need help and then it's like oh i don't have a community i've alienated myself from everybody and yeah. which is such a you know and i think we've all had experiences of that in in different workplaces where it's like whoa geez what's, what's wrong with you like i'm just i'm just trying to showing up to work and i don't know what's going on i'm just trying to do my best here if you've got a community of, of women especially like if we're yeah. coming back to that they're like hey this is how we're doing this. Please jump on board. We want to help. Yes. I think that's having a network amazing. of any kind, just yes. for any creative discipline. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, we're talking, mm-hmm. you do illustration and you've got your fabulous book that's published. Thank you. I do, you know, 3D art. I think it, it doesn't matter what creative discipline you come from, but creating mm-hmm. the biggest creative mm-hmm. bubble you can around yourself can be so beneficial to push your skills further get mm-hmm. new ideas yep. and and also feel like you're not alone doing this random crazy oh, thing where you're following yeah. a passion you know yeah and i think that yep. happens a lot you know and I, part of me feels incredibly privileged that i'm at this time and i'm doing this creative thing at a time where i can just look on youtube on how to do something or i can just reach out to someone on twitter totally or agree. linkedin or something totally to have agree. a conversation with how you do it because i'm so many times i listen to podcasts where it's these mm. art greats I, I listen to art cafe it's amazing mm. um, and they're talking about the times when they had to go to the local library to boot yeah. up the computer to look on a forum yep. and it's like we don't yep. have to do that anymore you know nope. we're, we're all so intertwined but we need to mm-hmm. use that we need to push that you know and That's make the key. We can because the things you can find and the, and the way you can push your own creativity is just exceptional you know and it's a tool people need to use more often it really is because that. every kind of creative discipline at its core is just someone who wants to make something look cool you know <laughs> and we've all got that urge you know and that's that's something you need to tap into and especially at the moment you know 
we're, yep. we're even very disconnected physically mm -hmm. but it's the mm -hmm. most connected i've been socially like oh ever. that's so good to hear it's, it's like, like it is it's, yeah. it's like <laughs> life work relationships that they they are what you make them and a lot of yes. that is being it is taking responsibility for yourself to then be like oh i can either live under a rock and like the world's on fire and i can't yeah. do this or i can be like i'm going to poke my head out and find somebody that's like yeah. me or yeah. maybe a little bit different but actually we share this and it's like as soon as you just start to share resources and actually mm -hmm. start to spur each other on your accountability to yourself means that you're producing work that you believe in that you want to do that you're yeah. you're going to the right people i mean oh my goodness mm -hmm. even that to get help to get resources yeah. to work together and before you know it you're working for a company that you've wanted to work for because you actually showed that you were a semi-decent human being who had a good work ethic and could work yeah. with other people. Yeah. I mean, it, you, uh, nobody teaches that, you this. It's you, half the battle. You teach it you really this. Is. It's like, yeah. you go get it. So yeah, you I'm can be so like the pleased most, to hear that. You can be like the most incredible artist in the world. Mm. You know, you can do the most amazing technical things. You can build the most fabulous kits of modular assets anybody's ever seen in their life, right? But if you can't, mm. you know share with someone the work you've done or if you can't help other people mm. then your skills are just lost in that respect and, and it's such a shame because mm. i think 50 percent of it is obviously you know do your 10,000 hour golden rule nonsense and read yeah, all the yeah, productivity yeah. books you can and yes yeah you know, get into something and the other half of it One is just be it. able to yeah. chat you know being able to yeah. converse with people and connect with people and present yeah. yourself and not feel embarrassed about promoting yourself. I think that's a massive thing. Um, and it's a Social massive media. thing at the stage I'm at yeah. as well, you know. Mm, I see lots of that. people around me that are absolutely exceptional artists and they're ready, but they don't feel like they are. Mm. and they don't they don't want to put anything out there they don't want to post anything on social media because they they feel like they're going to be judged for it because it's not perfect or they feel like mm. they can't approach people because they're not ready yet to be able to throw themselves in an industry but there will never be a time in your life unless you're incredibly talented and skilled and planned where you will feel ready to take any step you know part of it is just going so yeah, in i go right even if i've got you know another three years worth of portfolio making to do it's mm -hmm. worth making a speculative approach you know even if um i'm just at the start of my journey making it known that you are and you know hi guys i'm here that's so valuable because that's how you reach people and that's yep. how you gain i know we talk about it and it's kind of cheesy like an audience on social media but that's how you gain a community of people you know mm -hmm it's so powerful and it has that, that is the difference isn't it it's like what what do you want do you want a following or do you want a community it's yes. like well they exactly. they can be one in the same thing and it is yes. like we, we do li we we live in a world of social media jargon of yes. how did my post do and did people engage with it or oh i would never do that to oh strip 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 all that back what is yeah. it you want yeah. I want a community of people that I trust and I want to talk to who yeah. are similar to me, who I can appreciate their work and they can appreciate mine and I can nudge yeah. them in the right direction. Yeah. I'm all about that. I'm, and it's so valuable. I honestly, everything you're saying, I'm just like, yep, this is the type of, <laughs> no, I really, I, I really mean that. I really, really mean that. I think it's, yeah. I, I actually think it is so important to hammer that home. It's like, w w what are we? We're social creatures in a very, um, self-centered unsociable time and yeah. yet despite those limitations or those expectations we can get past all that nonsense and actually get back to what life is, is or should or can be about yeah. so no I've, I'm you're talking my language I love it um, yeah man no it's, it's class um, yeah. it's lovely if, and I think Mm. building that community coming off the back of that community like yeah, there please. are yeah they're in they're a network of people that i now have sourced i suppose yes yeah, yeah yeah um uh put myself out there and reached out to and they're like fellow students just in different universities or people mm. in industry that i just occasionally reach out to to say that they're mm -hmm. working with or they've inspired me Amazing. Or people i converse with that are just not even in the same discipline that i just think yep. are cool and they're doing yep. something cool and i want to tell them they're doing something cool you know i think building that community f as a as an artist is so valuable and you'll never feel ready you'll never feel like you're good enough you'll never feel like mm. well, you might you know you'll never feel like you can show everything 100 percent, you know but you just need to take that jump and it's it's scary for lots of people mm -hmm. understandably you know mm -hmm. it's, it's personality 
trait, I suppose, isn't it? I suppose. Mm. But you know, people just reach need permission, that network I think. and find them people. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. People. Mm. In my experience, me. I'm saying people. I'm I'm saying this to me as much as anybody else. When before I got this done, it was that thing, books, that massive that, that, thing, that thing <laughs> just that thing that, that took that a tiny sp- thing. big did, section of my thing. life of hours of work and dedication and meeting deadlines. <laughs> before that was my name on a on a book. It was me looking at artists and authors and being like, oh, that's that's something that other people do. Good for them, you know. Yeah. Like, oh, that would be cool to do, but that's something that other people do. Yeah, that's, that's something that authors do. Yeah. That's something that <laughs> successful people do. Mm-hmm. No, that's something that real people do when they just take a section of their life and go, "I'm going to commit some time to learning this thing." Yeah. That doesn't mean that you're suddenly working for Naughty Dog or, you know, J.K. Rowling tomorrow. What happens is that you spend would the be time. Nice, with, it'd be nice. <laughs> I mean, hey, it'd be lovely if somebody somebody wants wants to pick us up. Then great. But you, you start just in case, where we're you're not, at. Uh, we're not adverse. <laughs> exactly. We just start where you're at. Start with what you know, start with what you enjoy, put some feelers out, get a community around you, go looking for folk and, you know, who knows where you can be in a couple of years time. I think we, we put way too much focus on the microwave meal expectation of yeah. people, relationships, work and play. It's like, I want it now and I want it in 30 yeah. seconds and then I want to enjoy it. And it's like, it doesn't work like that. It's you've got to chip away at it and then just see what happens. Exactly. Katie, this has been 100%. like genuinely. This has been awesome. Like, I really, really mean that. I, oh, I have you. really, really it's appreciated this. Good. I'm, I'm, We've never met in person, but we're I know, right? Friends. So just jumping into it, I think it's it's <laughs> so cool. What is it exactly? <laughs> it is so cool to be able to share resources, to actually have an honest, open conversation with somebody about industry. And again, like I, I am so new to how this all works within the mm-hmm. game industry. So I, I've, yeah. I've, you know, I know what concept artists are. I have an idea of how Blender works. That's about, that's where my knowledge <laughs> stops. It's like, but how do people do this? So it's like, I love that there's so, there's so many things you've highlighted where I'm like, oh yeah, I, I know that. And that makes sense. Um, if you had, um, First of all, is there anything I've missed? And secondly, that so. you want to I think say, we're good. Perfect. Great, sweet. <laughs> is there anything that you would like to say to folk? If you had a, a parting message to, to leave with Ooh. people, what would that Ooh. be? My parting message would be learn constantly from everyone else all of the time. That's it. That's I love message. that. That's my, that's my advice. One more time. And that Even if, you know... If they're great and you aspire to be them, you know, and you're just looking at them thinking one day I hope within my fifties I could do something like that, you know. Mm. Or even if you look at someone and they're just starting out, everyone approaches everything differently, you know. Yeah. Yep. And it's every kind of perspective. The more the more perspectives you can have on how to, I don't know, approach shading a tree or mm-hmm. approach building a wall, you know. Mm-hmm. The more you can collaborate and, and get all of these different ideas together the more valuable that information becomes so don't look at anybody mm. in any team and go oh just gonna do my thing you, you're yep. not there you know or yep. because everyone is valuable and you can learn things from absolutely totally anybody all of the time <laughs> I love in that. any walk Absol- of life not just yeah. creative <laughs> yeah no no listen to people as if they have something that is actually valuable for you to hear i, I totally agree mm-hmm. yeah magic <laughs> Katie, thank you very much. Um, thank you. <laughs> let's uh, yeah, let's 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 call it there, folks. Um, this has been Art Notes with myself, Jonathan Liddell, and Katie Templeton. Um, I'll put all of your links and the resources in the show notes for today. Magic, happy, 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 happy. Perfect. <laughs> Get creative people. Get creative people. <laughs> Take care. Bye bye bye.